Season 2, Round 8, Classic vs. Paralyzed. Well, looks like top left paralyzed, bottom right classic. Mirrored pylons. All right, guys. <laughs> Whoa, they both pylon on nine. We uh, are on the far spots here on this map. That's good. I'm glad. Which means there's more variables of what can happen in PvP. Mm -hmm. There's just more build, build orders available. Because you can still do the chases you do if you're close. But there's also some tremendous risks you can take when you're far apart. That's right. I'm trying to get ahead, and I think in a team versus team matchup, this is probably where we're going to have the highest probability of builds like that. Yeah, this is like you either probably play very greedy, or you do like a crazy all in like a four gate blink. Um, which one do you choose here? Hard to say. Again, these guys are both. Um, it's going to sound weird to say, but I would say novices compared to a lot of the other players we've had in the GSLs. Yeah. And I don't mean that as in, like, where their skills are right now. I mean that as in their experience in GSL. Yeah. And the longest lasting, most prestigious StarCraft 2 tournament of all time. Um, and so occasionally you can have some weird games coming up from players like that. These guys seem to be very evenly matched. They're on the same team. We even saw the last game, they had very similar play styles and builds. So sometimes you gotta wonder, is Micro the best route, like let's say a Stalker all in or something like that, is this the best route to go, um, you know, for, for these guys to try to, def to decide what's a win, right? Well, uh, you know, I think that there's a certain amount of randomization that has to happen in a best of five PvP, especially against a teammate, um, where it's like, is that the best route? I think in one game, yeah. Like, you're going to have to do something like that at least one time in a best of five if you want to play that best of five really optimally. Yeah. Like, I guess there are, like, um, you know, like, let's say we had two great players from best of fives playing against each other, such as, let's say, like, a Sulky and an MVP, right? These guys have proven that best of five, best of seven. They'll plan that out perfectly and mix in the right amount of cheeses and all-ins and craziness and macro and everything. Right. Maybe between two players that renowned like that, we could have, like, just five safe macro builds. Just because they know the other player that's, will mix that, in the that's right a good amount. Point. I mean, he might be like, yeah. well, he's going to cheese one game, and then, you know, out of out of four other games, I should win at least two of those. So yeah. I just hold one cheese and then play super safe the other two. Yeah, it, so in a situation like that, maybe, but I think in a, like between these okay, two, for doing, instance, you have doing, to have some crazy all in. Uh, the same strategies, <laughs> the slightly different ways they got there. Um, it well, looks like uh, we had um, Paralyzed get. Paralyzed well, saw the Stargate and then added his Stargate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this game could look exactly the same. That would be pretty... It's possible, but uh, pretty, you're more likely sad. to open Phoenix on this map. Uh, anyways, it's an Oracle, so... Um, this map may look exactly the same as map number one. It may be the same game on a different map. Wow. That Paralyzed with the scouting intel, yay. <laughs> um... Yeah, they're both going for Phoenixes, so... No, excuse me, one's going for Phoenix, what am I talking about? Um, yeah, you're right, Artos, this could be uh, one of these games. Now, he's on one base right now, Classic's going for uh, two more gates and the Twilight Council. After a single Oracle. So this yeah. is actually much better than for him than the last game was yeah. on Overgrowth, because he went into a Robo and an Expand. Here, going into Blink... Uh, still, this isn't good for him, right? Like, he's still been countered. Uh, still, this is a, an advantage for Paralyzed, especially oh since he's going to find it this quick. But uh, a little oh. bit better, at least, for Classic this time. Oh, okay, he does get right up there to where the Oracle is. Start dealing some damage to him as the Oracle retreats. Trying to do a little twist out there to get out uh, while his opponent was multitasking, but he does lose it. And Blink started and the two gateways uh, finish up. Meanwhile, Paralyzed now going for that Nexus. This Blink Stalker attack here. It could be pretty scary, Artosis. Sure, it could be. Uh, you know, yep. if he makes a lot of Stalkers, it's funny that he's, he's making some Phoenixes here as well. I'm surprised that he's actually spending some money on that. Maybe that's just to keep these out to hide well, what he, he's doing? Did he just do that? Oh, I was going to say because he gla uh, came by there. Oh, he canceled. Right? Yeah, he canceled. He's oh, it, so he was faking. Am it, I yeah. crazy to classic not um, warp, turn those into warp gates? Uh, I th I, he did now, I think, but he okay. did for a while. But okay. you know, this is really cool. He keeps on starting the phoenix as phoenixes come up. 
and then canceling as to they make go it, away. Yeah, to make it look like he's banking him. Yeah, like, he should start another one and then cancel this one underneath I it. Think, I think actually Paralyzed is trying to check for this. Okay, now he's going to cancel? He's trying to, yeah. Sick. The thing is, if you find a Phoenix, when you have more Phoenixes, you just kill it so quickly. It's, like, yeah. free. Well, Phoenix versus Phoenix is, like, out of all the units against other units, it's the one that snowballs the most quickly. Mm -hmm. It really is. Uh, so... You know, it's, it's a lot like Muta's in that regard, where it's like, well, just whoever has most wins by far. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, like, so silly. Um, I think he's basically figured it out. That there's actually no Phoenixes in here. And he is making Immortals. Yeah, there's no way he doesn't know now. He's been duped. Well, well, the thing is, he would want four Phoenixes probably anyways, just because you need a certain amount of lifts to make sure that the blink all-in doesn't kill you, and enough to threaten killing yeah. probes off so they don't want to leave their base. But... Anyways, it's a it's a better situation. Two Phoenix cancels or three back there. He did like three cancels. Okay. All right. The uh, oh, the uh, are gonna go around here now. Stalkers blink now underneath these Phoenixes, and it looks like they're all gonna get away. Yeah, beefy units. Meanwhile, back over here at Paralyzes base, he's got an expansion. Whoa! Don't do that. Some pretty good uh, pushing back of those Phoenixes. He's actually zoned them out very well. And well, done even a good taking job. out uh, one of those Phoenixes, uh, if he does do an attack uh, eventually here, that's one less hmm. pickup. Um, a lot of times in it, when we have, we talked about this long ago, by the way. Yeah. You know, the, the art of how many things do you pick up with Phoenixes? Oh yeah. And uh, you know, versus having Phoenixes attacks in the air, uh, it seems in PvP that it's pretty much been solved that it, in those timing attacks, like a three base versus three base, you just use the Phoenixes to remove important units from yeah. the battle. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, while your army does all this damage, and by the time they've dropped those units, you've usually had uh, the advantage. Yeah, especially if you each have two lifts. That's like taking uh, eight supply of their important units out of the battle for a very long time. Of course, it's eight of your supply as well. But uh, generally, it's two very different compositions when you have Phoenixes yeah. because they'll normally have Blink Stalkers and you'll normally have Immortals. So uh, it'll snowball a little bit better for you. Yeah. So very uh, interesting plays that we've seen from both sides here. This is actually a pretty good match so far. Yeah. Um, we have Classic taking the third base here. The Zealot Legs uh, are being upgraded. In this case, it is Classic that's going to have the uh, attack upgrade finishing up here ahead of his opponent. Uh, I do like how he's sending in the Hallucinated mm. Phoenix into the main while he just brushes by uh, the northern part of Classic's territory to check, okay, is this expansion coming up? How long, or how far along is that? Uh, Templar Archive's now almost done here for Paralyze. You know, I think that Paralyze is going to walk across the map and kill Classic here. Exactly what you were talking about before, how the third base comes up after the second gateway explosion, yeah. is exactly what Classic did not do. Um, which is a little bit odd that he didn't do that. It's like super risky, right? Well, it's like I was saying that it, pretty much in PvP, this is what you do, right? Is yeah. that you get your third base late because you just want to be absolutely safe. If he takes his own third base, well, then you've got more gateways up and you have more attacking units. And the the type of units you have up is uh, stalkers with blink and immortals are just so strong together, or even zealots and colossi up together. Ouch! Paralyze is actually up by almost 20 army supply, which is ridiculously gigantic. Uh, he's going to easily kill this base if that's what he wants to go for, or he could yeah. actually he even might, go for the throw. He might, yeah, I was going to say, since Archons are morphing, if he warps this in and hits, like, right now... No, he's going to go for this expansion. I take it all back. No? Well, now that now that next expansion is on, yeah, I think he should just probably go for the throat here. Yeah. Uh, okay, so he's going to come for the kill move in here now. Two Archons out for both parties. You can see a little bit of reluctance here for Paralyzed to commit to that attack. It looks like he's going to have the Mother Support out there to make a time warp. All right, well, it looks like Class is going to come up behind him. Did I he guess he's going to try to do a little flank with a warp in there. Okay, uh, he's coming up here now. Uh, Classic actually overextending slightly here. Uh, Paralyzed now moving down. I think he's done, Artosis. I mean, this is... Pretty, uh, pretty scary. This army here. There's so many yeah. zealots in the front, and yes, archons are good against zealots. Yeah. But I mean, by the time those zealots have died, the immortals are still there in the back. The, the you know, the only thing that's remaining is uh, archons and stalkers yeah. for both parties. And there's a lot of uh, immortals here for paralyzed. So it's it's four mortals against zero, and he's up by yeah. like eight army supply to ten army supply at times. So that's like. That's a pretty straightforward yeah, I, victory I, in Army vs. Army. I do like what Paralyze is doing with the expansion here. I mean, it's, it's always a little bit trickier to tell how far ahead you are when you're in the game. 
Yeah, and it for looks sure. like he's going to back up here. He's saying, well, I don't know about this. Can't quite see all of his army at once, but I see. Okay, he gets some other support. Nicely done there by Classic. Yeah, he's going to get rid of the pylon. Well, uh, what is the, the comeback plan for Classic here? Uh, I think he has to move out and attack right now and maybe just make Paralyze uh, split his units poorly because with that third base coming up and just simply Prompt. put a better unit comp for yeah. Paralyze, this is like really you know, tough. Prompt, Prompt for uh, Classic right now with his counterattack as the Immortals are so clunky. Um, uh, you know, normally sometimes you can't get away in time if you're someone like paralyzed and you try to run back, but in this case, he got back there, he's in great shape. And even this angle that he's going to come in here, mm. this is a bigger uh, a space to make a large line for paralyzed than it is for classic. Yeah, the, just looking at that, every time I see the unit tab, it, I just compare all the numbers, and it's yeah. just such a paralyzed favored battle coming up. He doesn't have a mothership core, or he does now again, but he doesn't have enough energy yet because he just remade it for a, a time warp. So that's a little something in Classic's favor. Yep. Uh, no probe transfer yet. Mm. Paralyzed probably should do that pretty soon here. And I believe he was sending that uh, warp prism down there to possibly hit the main, but he may be bringing that back now. Right. Now, you got to think in Classic's uh, situation, he knows his opponent has an expansion ahead of him, right? But he's trying to put the pressure on, but this is a tough one to break in here now. Archon count, it's actually 7 to 6 now, just now, as Paralyzed adds another Archon. Yeah, and he's actually down in Zealots at the moment. Uh, kind of tough, but of course those Archons really are going to help out against all the Zealots, but he doesn't have like the type of surface area he needs. He doesn't really... There's not enough going for him. The, the extra two Archons, not enough to really take on the extra three You know, it's funny, because even though it's a huge bridge, that they're one guy's on one, one army's on one side, the other army's on the other side, uh, it's too narrow, even on a bridge that big, for Classic to run in there. Mm -hmm. The Archon's damage can't be optimized. That's right. So, you know, he, he might be able to draw him out here. I'm actually a little bit surprised that Paralyze is pushing out here. Yeah, no, that uh, would be the this was only like the way worst. that he could yeah. mess that up, is to attack okay. into that arc. <laughs> that is a seriously scary arc, what? by the way. Oh my god, okay, that's... Paralyze kind of choking a little bit here. Yeah, that was incredibly sloppy. You basically want to sit on... You want to make a concave here. Yeah, yeah, concave just beats kind of convex, like always that. say. It's a lot of units on both sides. And I guess here we go, Tasis. <laughs> Time warp, uh, obviously very important. The Archon's, Archon's just stuck. eliminating the Zealots here. Um, but it's a surface area right now uh, for the Archon versus the Zealots right now. A slightly better arc here for uh, Paralyzed. There are a lot of Archons here for Classic as he's starting to push through here. The Immortals uh, are finally getting exposed now here in the back. He's going to have to target down some of these Stalkers and then warp in a little bit more. Nice micro with those Archons kiting. More Zealots being warped in over here at the bottom. Still though, uh, two Archons now remaining. He's got to get rid of these last two Archons as a Zealot. Uh, Archon Warpin is what's going to be trying to carry him uh, as he tries to save this base. More Zealots Warpin in again, still here, as Classic is driving back Paralyze. Oh man, and uh, I am really confused about that Did game. he just like not do a Warpin round there? I don't even know what did to say. Did he just not I don't understand warp why. in units from his gateway? What, what, was, what were his minerals at? Did you see it? I he, was confused because I... Did. We saw a warping round come from Classic, and then we saw no warping round come from Paralyze. Yeah, I. Well, you know what's funny about it? I, I didn't think he was going to tap out there. You know what I'm saying? There was no reason to. I was, he should have just warping around of Zealots because he had well, his many Paralyze gateways. Well, Paralyze was in, in fine shape. I don't know. I didn't know where. We saw in the beginning of that attack, Zealots come in there. Um, but. The thing is, as soon as he kills that last Archon with his two remaining Immortals, Immortals that's yeah. so low on health, then when he warps in we his Zelots... We don't normally cast games like that. Like when he that warps in his Zelots, they will stop his opponent's Zelots. Specifically in a round eight of Codass, you don't just like... Uh, like... Rage quit. You don't normally see stuff like that. That was... I think he could have... I mean, that game could have gone on. Um, it's, yeah, I think we, so. What, what happened with the, uh, the Warp I'm Prism confused. back there? Um, Did, maybe he warped in units at his opponent's base. I don't think so. Well, what was confusing about it was like we if saw the warp prism. Didn't make sense either. We, we saw the warp prism go out, and then I'm like, okay, and then it kind of came back. But I, I'm confused because, um, well, anyways, it was weird because it looked like that could have gone on a little bit longer. And yeah, considering how important sure. this is, um, anyways, we're gonna take a short break. When we come back, we're gonna go on to the uh, game number three here in this best of five for day one of the round of eight in the GSL Codes.